Okay, well, happy um, happy Friday, you guys. Uh, it's week five Friday, and uh, and we'll take a look uh, at more uh, Panda stuff. In particular, we'll look at um, kind of creating summaries with kind of this pivot table and group by ability um, in uh, in Pandas. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, and just take a look at uh, at a few examples here. Okay, so. Um, so an important concept is the idea of uh, a multi-index or a hierarchical index, okay? So, so far we've, we've seen indexes already, and we know that indexes are kind of like row names. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do here is we are going to create um, some data or a series here, but notice that my index is a hierarchical index, okay? It's a it's a multiple index. The index itself is a uh, is basically a two D array. I've got um, um, well, you know the way I have it defined here is basically two uh, two rows uh, each of length nine. I've got A A A B B B C C C, and then I've got one two three one two three one two three. Right. So here I've kind of created this manually. Um, this is not the normal way that you would create a multi-index. A multi-index would generally get created by some kind of pivot operation. But, um, but here I'm just kind of showing you that if you wanted to, you can create um, a multi-index this way. Okay, and so the result of this multi-index is going to look like this. Okay, so this is the result, uh, the resulting series of using the multi-index. So here, you know, the, as far as the values go, I'm just using uh, NumPy's random feature to just randomly sample, um, uh, you know, random integers here, okay, from zero to nine. Uh, but the multi-index is AAA uh, BBB CCC, and you can see this uh, going like this, right? It goes A, and then because the A's get repeated, these correspond to are also, so this is A1, a2 and A3, but the A's don't get printed again. Just that's kind of the default um, style as far as printing out a multi-index. Um, the hierarchy, you know, the A, but this is also A2, A3. This would be B1, this is B2, and this is B3, but again, the B's don't get repeated. And similarly, here it is with C's. Okay, and so now you have kind of um, this, uh, this index and then if you ask what is the index of this series, okay, the um, the index is now uh, basically um, it's kind of this uh, it's a it's a list, not a list. I guess it's a it's an index, but it's a kind of uh, um, almost like a list of tuples uh, where you have a one, a two, a three, uh, indicating that uh, you know this first value corresponds to uh, to this index value here. Okay, so um, if you wanted to, you can then subset, okay? If you subset the, uh, um, a series or anything with a multi-index, okay? You can use kind of the, the data.location feature. And so if I say, I wanna subset that, uh, the location where the index is B, okay? It's going to basically pull out the, this portion, okay? And because everything is a B, it just, uh, it simplifies it. So now the index is one, two, three, and we have five, zero, zero, okay? Uh, you can also uh, select via the kind of the inner index, okay? And so, um, so here, uh, as far as the location goes, right? So it's a multi-index. So the first part is uh, ABC, okay? And then the second part goes one, two, three. And so here I'm specifying, I want basically um, all letters, A, B, and C, but I want the inner index to be two, okay? And that would correspond to A2, which is eight, B2, which is zero, and C2, which is seven. And again, because all of these will have the two in common, the inner index in common, you're only gonna see the, um, the A8, B0, and C7 here, okay? And, um, and if you ask, you know, what, what is this, the resulting, um, 
the result of selecting a series with a multi-index with um, you know kind of one of these things, the result is just going to be a series. And then if you ask for the index itself, it's no longer a multi-index. It's it simplified it down to just a, a simple index because you've basically filtered from the multi-index only the, the parts that have the two or the parts that have the A. Does that kind of make sense as far as the, um, the multi-index and how that goes? I think so. All right. So, um, so again, generally back here, I created the multi-index myself, okay? Uh, but again, this is not normally how you would go about doing that, okay? Normally you would take some kind of data frame which has a simple, simple index, but then what you would do is you would do some kind of operation such as stack or unstack or something like that, okay? Um, data unstack, excuse me. Okay, so, um, so you have a, um, so we have a data frame here and you can kind of uh, stack it or unstack it, which is uh, a lot like the uh, spread or gather, um, or I'm sorry, the, the pivot wider, the, uh, the pivot wider function is, uh, is very similar to kind of uh, unstack in, uh, in R, okay? And so here, uh, the result of unstacking, um, or I'm sorry, um, I, got, I'm, I got way ahead of myself here. Okay, so so here here's our data. Okay, and if I take this data, which is you know the data is currently in one column, I can then unstack this. Okay, I can unstack this, and basically it's going to turn it into a, a data frame structure. Okay, so here I've got nine values in this column, um, and I have the the uh, the multi index A B C, and then one two three one two three, and if I take that those those nine values and I unstack them. Okay then um, it's going to take the inner index, the one, two, three, and basically make them column headings, okay? And if you, uh, if you kind of take a look at the result, the result here is now you don't have a multi-index, you just have the index A, B, C, and then that inner index, which was kind of the one, two, three, one, two, three, has, has now become, um, become column headings here, okay? And the result is that this is now a three by three data frame. If you if you unstack this, all right. So if you if you have a data frame that looks like this, you've got um, row index and column index. Okay. You take this data frame, data dot unstack, and then you call stack back on it, right? So this this seems a little bit silly, but I'm I'm basically undoing what I just did. Okay. So you can take the data, you can unstack it, and then stack it back, and you're going to get the result, right? So if you take um, this three by three, and then you call stack upon it, you're going to get the multi-index back, okay? And this is often how you would end up creating a multi-index, is you take some kind of data frame, and then you call stack on some, uh, some of the columns, and it will uh, end up generating a, a multi-index, okay? If it makes sense to kind of stack those um, column headings together, okay? Um, if you have a... Um, so if you have this type of uh, multi-index, AAA, BBB, CCC on the outer index and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three on the inner index, okay, they're this, the second level index. And again, the, the multi-index, there's no um, limit to how many kind of levels and hierarchies you have, right? Here, here I'm just doing um, a hierarchy of kind of two levels, but if you, if you wanted to have, um, you know, third levels and so on and so forth, um, that's allowed, okay? But, um, but what you can also do is you can kind of um, swap, swap some of the levels here. And so if you, if you have just kind of two, two levels in the index, um, you can swap them. And so now the AAA, BBB, CCC, that, those go on the inside. It doesn't change the order, right? So the order of the values, 5, 8, 9, 5, 0, 0, 1, 7, 6, that, that remains here, okay? And, um, and so we have, uh, so the, that remains. And so because uh, it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, that, that's going to uh, remain. Now, um, and, and just like before, you can um, uh, filter down to certain sections and you can say, you know what, I only want 
um, where the level is A, okay, the, the inner level is A, and it will, uh, it will pull out those, those values um, just, just as before, okay? Um, but what you can also do is, this is not your traditional kind of ordering here. This uses the kind of this ordering of the values. You can then say, you know, now that I've swapped the levels, I wanna sort by the index, okay? And then it's gonna sort giving priority to the first level of the index and then giving, um, and then sort according to the second level of the index. So in that case, it's gonna sort all the ones to the top and then you'll have ABC and then the twos and then ABC and then threes and then ABC, okay? And so now it has uh, resorted the values according to the, the multi-index with the, um, the, uh, the levels in the uh, multi-index swapped, okay? Okay, and, um, but again, all of these things, these, these operations, calling swap level or sort index and things of that nature, doesn't actually um, change the, the object, the original object itself. Uh, I believe you can do a, a lot of these things with the um, argument in place equals true. With in place equals true, then it will actually change the, um, the data itself, but it, otherwise they're just kind of returning copies um, of the object, okay? So the original data remains uh, unchanged. Okay, let me go ahead and give you your uh, first view quiz answer. You know what? I realized I didn't actually activate it. So first view quiz answer today, I believe is the letter A. I should just kind of double check that. <laughs> but um, first view quiz answer today um, is A. Let me just log in and turn this quiz back on. A is your first answer, okay. All right, um, and so here I've called swap level. Okay, so again, swap levels results in one, two, three on the outer and ABC on the inside. And if I call swap levels unstack, then we get kind of the transpose of, you know, when I did data.unstack. So when I did data.unstack, we had ABC, down, um, as row values and one, two, three as columns. And now I have one, two, three as rows and ABC as columns, okay? So this is kind of like calling transpose, you know, swap level and unstack uh, results in kind of the, um, the transpose here. Um, yeah, so when you uh, call sort index, what it does is it, it sorts based on the hierarchy that you provided, okay? So right now, so the outer index, the, the first level index is the one, two, threes. After I've called swap level, the first level index is one, two, three, and it's currently not sorted, right? Um, and so when I call swap level sort index, then it's gonna sort first on that um, first level uh, hierarchy. Okay, and so, um, yeah, if we compare this and compare this, these are just kind of transposes of each other. All right, and then, um, and again, here I've got um, the, uh, the data. The data right now is just a series. And so if I call sum on the series, I just get the sum of the numbers, right? So right now the, it's currently the data is just these, uh, these nine values here. And if I add them up, they, uh, they add up to 41, okay? Um, if you... Um, what you can do is you can sum based on the first level of the index, right? So level level zero. So if you think of the hierarchy, you've got level zero because everything's zero indexed. So level zero is the kind of the outer, the first hierarchy level. And then, um, and if you want to kind of sum on the second level, you can also do that level equals one. And again, for the original data, this is not with the swapped levels. This is, it looks like this. So when you say sum on kind of the first level, you're gonna get the sum of 589 and then 500 zero, zero, and 176. So we're gonna see um, 13, what is that? Uh, 22, five and 14. When we um, ask on level zero, right? 
And then over here, when we say level equals one, we're going to get um, it's going to sum on the kind of the inner, the second level of the index, and that, that will result in 11, 15, and 15. Okay. So that's working with a multi index. And so let me just kind of show you um, how this might work if we have a data frame and you can then reshape and pivot the data using similar ideas here, okay? So here I've created a, um, a data frame and it's a, it's a two by three data frame. I know it looks like we've got more stuff going on here, but there's really only six values inside, um, inside the data frame, all right? We've got zero uh, um, and we have uh, the index as far as the, um, the rows go, the index values are alpha and beta. And we're gonna, we're gonna name that index to be the letter Okay. And then as far as the columns, we have one, two, and three written out as words. And we're going to name those columns number. Okay. And we've got one, two, three. And therefore, in, on the inside, we have a total of six values. Okay. So I can call stack. And what that's going to do is it's going to stack the values across the columns. Okay. So it's going to take one, two, three, and stack them. And we're, this is what we get. Okay. So we get um, the values zero through five arranged this way. And it goes alpha, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, beta one, beta two, beta three. Okay, and then again, if I call unstack, which is kind of the, the undoing of the stacking, we're gonna get exactly this, okay? You can also, um, when you call unstack, you can specify how the unstacking should be done, okay? And so by default, when you call unstack, it's gonna unstack on kind of the, the lowest level of the index, okay? So in, um, in this case, it's gonna kind of look at, you know, this is um, index level one is the alpha and beta and index, uh, or index level, level equals zero. And here index level equal one is kind of the inner and it's gonna unstack based on the um, kind of the inner, the, the lowest, uh, lowest in the hierarchy. And so, you know, that, that does this. But inside the unstack argument, you can also specify and you can say you want to unstack a different level. And so here, if we say unstack zero, we're going to get, um, it's going to unstack the alpha and it's going to unstack beta. Okay. And, uh, and it does this in this way. And it preserves kind of the, uh, the, the order of the index, you know, as, you know, from, from when we created it. Okay. You can also kind of specify. Um, not just by the, uh, by number, but by the name of the index. So here we said, you know, in unstack level index level zero, we can also say unstack, um, the index, uh, the letter portion, right. After, after stacking it. So when we, when we stacked it, okay. You have the, the letter and you have the number as, as far as the, uh, the multi-index goes, and you can specify, you want to unstack the letter, okay? Or you can say unstack on the number, okay? And, uh, and, and you get both of these things, okay? If you, um, if you have some kind of series here, okay? So here I have um, series uh, with data zero, one, two, three, okay? And it's, uh, it comes with index A, B, C, D, right? And then I have a second series, okay, which has the values four, five, six, and it only has the index C, D, and E, okay. And you can um, you can concatenate the series and provide keys when you concatenate the series. And what you do is, uh, and if you so if you if you don't provide keys, okay, and if you just concatenate it, it's it's just gonna produce kind of A0, B1, C2, D3, C4, D5, E6, okay? It's just gonna kind of concatenate these two series together um, and it's not gonna complain. But if you provide the argument keys, then it will create a multi-index, okay? And so here, you know, S1 we corresponds to key one and S2 corresponds to key two. And so, um, so now we get a multi-index with, uh, you know, 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D, and then we got 2C, 2D, and 2E. And, um, you know, as, as we might expect, 
if I were to um, unstack these, okay, if I were to unstack this, then it's going to take the inner level index, A, B, C, D, uh, and E, and it's going to unstack those in, across columns. And basically where it doesn't find a, a value to insert there, so we don't have um, a value for E under um, level one, okay, and we don't have values for A and B over here, it's going to introduce NANDs, okay? It's going to introduce missing values because it doesn't know what to put in for there, okay? So, so that could happen um, when you call unstack. Um, and if you um, if you call stack back upon that, okay. So if I if I take this, this is the result of unstack, and I call stack by default, it's gonna it's gonna filter out the missing values, right? So so we don't see anything about the missing values. We just have A B C D and C D E, okay. If you can specify the argument drop N A equals false, right? And um, and so here when we unstacked them, it introduced uh, a NAND for one E and it introduced NANDs for two A and two B. And we can say, you know, keep the, uh, keep the, keep the NANDs. Okay. And, um, and this will be the result. Okay. So a lot of times when you do unstack and stack or, you know, stack and unstack, and you kind of do these reverse operations, you end up getting the same thing as what you started off with. But here, um, if I put in this argument, drop equals false, you know, now we have kind of the expanded multi-index to kind of give us the uh, the complete combinations, but um, but now we also have missing values in those places there. All right, so um, so maybe just I wanted to show you just a, a couple examples of you know using some of these tools to uh, to do a little bit of uh, data wrangling, okay? Because we can. Uh, use you know, the summarizing um, functions along with kind of these pivot functions to do um, and re-indexing and things like that. Um, so the, uh, the data I'm gonna use is this macroeconomic data that um, you know, I'm, I'm just following some examples from, uh, from this textbook, Python for Data Analysis. And so this kind of comes in and it has you know, some macroeconomic data for uh, across different years uh, and the quarter and things like that. And, you know, we've got things like uh, GDP and uh, I don't remember what all of these things number, uh, consumer, consumer something, uh, government, I don't know, just different values here, okay? CPI is consumer price index. I'm not sure what all of these things are, okay? I, we guess we have population in millions, inflation values, but some of the other things I'm not, 100% sure what they, uh, what they represent, okay? But anyway, um, we, can, uh, we can take a look at this. I guess uh, there's, there's a little bit more information about all of these things. Gross domestic product, personal consumption expenditures, things like that, okay. Um, all right, so we have um, 203 entries, okay? And 14 columns. Uh, Zero through thirteen. Okay, so if I um, if I just read uh, call read underscore CSV, okay, pandas will default to creating just a an integer index starting off at zero, okay, and so dot head will just kind of give us our first five rows, and so on and so forth, okay. And what I probably want to do is I probably want to create an index based on the year and quarter, right? So we've got for each. <coughs> For each year, we have kind of four entries, um, basically, um, you know, quarter one, two, three, and four, and uh, and so forth. Okay, and so um, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, an index using this period index function. Okay, and so there's all sorts of um, um, functions inside pandas that allows you to create different types of in index values, all right? And, uh, and so if you, if you just go to the reference and you look up index objects, okay? There's, um, there's a lot, okay? You've got uh, the you know, multi-index and period index, date time index, things, that, all kinds of stuff. And, um, and your best resource is just to go online and look up like, how do I create this kind of index here, okay? But basically what I wanna do is I wanna turn 
the year and the quarter into some kind of index here. Okay, so we're gonna look at period index, okay? And as far as period indexes, you can specify the, uh, the year um, and you can specify the quarter, which works out for us because inside our uh, data, okay, I've got the uh, column year and I've got the column quarter. So I can access the year by calling data.year. I can access that column for quarter, data.quarter. And we're gonna call this the date, okay, as far as the index goes. So, um, so the period index is smart enough to recognize, okay, we've got 1959 and one, that's gotta be uh, 1959 quarter one and two is gonna be quarter two and quarter three and quarter four. And it creates, um, it creates our, uh, our index for us, okay? Now, as far as um, the periods go, um, there's a few different options and you can say, you know, the, this is the quarter that begins in, uh, you know, some date or uh, ends at some date or th things like that, okay? All right, and so um, what we're gonna do is we are going to um, just select some of the columns, okay? We're gonna uh, select the columns uh, GDP, inflation, and unemployment, okay? And these will be kind of the uh, the items that we're, uh, we're looking at, okay? So as far as the columns go, we're gonna just say, um, create an index based on uh, with these names, okay? And then we're going to re-index our data, right? So when we re-index our data, it's kind of just like selecting. It conforms, it forces our, col um, our entire data set to kind of just conform to the columns that we've specified. So we're gonna uh, re-index based on just these three columns. And so um, when we do that, it basically reduces our data just to those three columns. Okay, and so re-indexing, um, you know, takes your original data and it conforms it to whatever index that you've specified. So here we've created a new index that's going to be um, take these column names or column headings, and uh, and we conform our data to the to fit those. Is that okay as far as uh, applying this re-index here? Okay, and then now um, uh, we'll, we'll take our um, our date time, uh, our index, our period index, which we've done um, back here, okay? So here periods is the result of creating the period index. And we've got 1959 Q1, 1959 Q2, 1959 Q3. Um, <clears throat> you can take the, that period index uh, and you can turn them into dates, okay? And so um, so this is, um, this is one of the, the options so you can do um, period index right so here i've got a period index and you can kind of convert it uh there is to timestamp um which is uh what we have and then as far as the uh the timestamp you can get back um uh however whatever frequency you want okay and so we, um, we have this, okay? So we're gonna get Q1 is gonna be January 1st, 1959. Q2 is gonna be uh, April 1st, 1959. Q3 is September, uh, July 1st, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And then, um, and right now the index of our data is just this, uh, this range index starting at zero and ending at 203. And what we wanna do is we wanna kind of replace uh, replace that index using this index, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just specify this new index. So now that we have this, this is an index, it's a length 203, so we have no issue. We're gonna just um, put this in right here, okay? So this is uh, what our new index is gonna be. And therefore, when I kind of just take a look at the head of my data, I have, you know, I think what I want, right? which is 1959, January 1st, 1959, April 1st, 1959, September 1st, so on and so forth. And I've got the three columns that I'm gonna be looking at, which will be GDP, inflation, and unemployment. Okay. And then from here, I can, um, I can stack them, okay? And, uh, and that would create um, a series where I'm kind of stacking all of these numbers. And maybe that's what I wanna do, maybe it's not, okay. Um, you can also um, 
I, I wouldn't say uh, suggest this, but this, these are just some things that you can do, right? So after, after stacking them, this is what I have. And then if I called reset index upon the stack, then it basically takes this, um, the stacked data and uh, resetting index is gonna just create a, basically a, a range index starting off at zero, okay? And this is not, I would say, you know, I don't know if this is um, what we wanna do, but, uh, but this is just something that, that can be done, okay? So you can, you know, reset the index, you can take a look at the index and you can see, well, you know, because we used to have something that was of length 203, but now each of these dates are going to be um, uh, re repeated three times, our total length is gonna be 609, okay? Question, why do you have to call stack giget again to reset the index, okay? Well, you don't have to, okay? At any time you can call, you can take this thing and you, like if I take this and I say reset index, okay? Then the date is gonna become one of the columns and then I'm gonna get a new, uh, uh, the index is gonna be 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 203, okay? So if I took this, if I took, after I've kind of created my index here and I called data, um, data.index is this, okay? Then, um, and I called a uh, reset index, then it would just kind of basically take uh, an integer vector uh, starting off at zero and, uh, and a, appending that as kind of the index there. And, and the current index will become a, a column. Okay. And so here, um, you know, I'm just showing, you know, this is the result of what would happen if you do data.stack. Data.stack is you get an index, um, a multi-index where one level of the index is the date and another level of the index is item. And then if I were to call um, reset index on that, then date and item become columns in the data. And then a new, uh, new index starting off at zero um, gets created. Okay. And you know it's going to have a length of six hundred nine. Um, so this is this is something that you know. Here we can do. Um, we can take this and um, and right now, as it stands, there's there's no name here, and so pandas just fills in a zero here. Okay, which is a little. Uh, <laughs> Not, not very handy for us, okay? But what we can do is we can just rename that column, okay? It used to be called zero and we can give it, give it a name, okay? Which is gonna be value, right? And so notice in all of these things, I've just been kind of chaining methods, okay? Because every time I call uh, one method, you know, the result is gonna be data.stack, the result is a series, okay? After I reset index on a series, the result's a data frame. And on the data frame, you can ask to uh, rename columns. And, uh, and as far as how, you, how to rename the columns goes, you, you give it a dictionary, kind of giving it the old column name and now the, and the new column name, okay? And so here, um, this is what we have, right? What happened to the rest of the columns? Well, I, um, I got rid of them. <laughs> and, uh, and that happened way back here, okay? So here I just specified, I created a new index where I said, these are the columns I'm interested in, okay? So the original data had a lot more, had a lot more columns, but here, you know, as far as this example goes, I'm gonna just say, you know, I only, I'm only interested in these three columns, real GDP, inflation, unemployment, all right? Just to kind of keep my, I guess, analysis simple. And then to specify, I only want um, this data, okay? I um, I re-indexed my data. I did data.reindex column equals columns, and then I saved that as data, okay? So the original data back here had a whole bunch of columns. Uh, after I re-indexed it, okay, then it keeps just the columns I want. And then I, I kind of made it permanent, that change by taking the result of this and assigning it back to data, okay? I could have assigned it back to a new object and then this original data would have been un unchanged. And then I could have called like called this like data subset or something. And that would have only had the three columns. Um, but as I was doing this, I just decided to call it data. Maybe I would regret that decision later, but here it is. Just now we reduced it down to three columns. 
Okay, so um, so this is what we have. And so now I've got the date, the item, the value, and I kind of have this, um, this long data set, 609 rows here, okay? And if I try to call unstack here, this doesn't quite work, okay? It doesn't work because um, it, we don't have a multi-index, okay? It, um, it's just going to, um, and, and so there, there's no kind of level to unstack, okay? Um, so, but what we can do is we can call pivot, okay? And so if you have your data in some kind of setup like this, you can, you can create, um, you can call pivot upon it, okay? So here I can take, um, take my long data, okay? Which is what I have here, okay? The long data, 609 rows, right? 609 rows, I've got uh, three columns, date, item, value, and then uh, I just have an integer index here. I can call pivot upon this, okay? And the, the values are, uh, we've got date is going to become, um, so when you call pivot, you're gonna say, this is what I want in the rows, this is what I want for my columns, and this is what, uh, where the values are gonna get um, put in, okay? So this is a lot, uh, kind of like, um, it's a bit like dplyr's pivot wider, okay? Um, where you're kind of just specifying basically um, what, the, what the rows are gonna be, where the column headings are gonna come from. Column headings come from this column called item, okay? So the row, row index is gonna come from this column date, and then we're going to pivot wider by taking these names inside real GDP, inflation, and unemployment. And we're going to take this column and we're going to make them column headings. And then we're going to fill in the insides using the values. Okay. So this was a lot of work just to kind of get back where we started, right? So this, the, the result here um, is basically what we started off with um, back here, right? So if you take, take a look at data head, we basically have the item as the column headings, real GDP, inflation, unemployment, and 1959, January 1, 1959, 0401, okay? And, uh, and pivot, basically, after transforming my data into long form, I can pivot it back and do this, right? So this is, this is a little bit silly, okay? Just because we kind of already had the data in the form that we wanted. Um, but, um, but this is also just to kind of demonstrate how, depending on how your data gets read in, you might get, your data might get read in, in some kind of form like this. And if you need to, you can pivot that data back. Okay. So you can then pivot, pivot it this way, right? So depending on how your, how your data intake comes in, um, a lot of times you kind of need to just wrangle it and manipulate it into the form that you need. Okay. Oh, let me give you uh, your next quiz answer. Next view quiz answer today is E, E as an elephant, E as an elephant. Second view quiz answer today. Okay. Um, so that's the long data. Um, if I kind of swapped date and item here, okay? If I say, you know, the index, I want to be the item, and then the columns, I want to be the date and the value, then then we're going to get a you know a much wider data set. Okay, now I only have three rows. Okay, and then across the columns, I'm going to have the uh, the dates: 1959 January 1, 1959 April 1, 1959 July 1, et cetera, et cetera, and the values um, get stored in here. Okay, and again, it feels silly because the original data was kind of already in this form, right? The only difference is that. When I pivot, the default um, or arrangement is going to be in alphabetical order. So the columns, the uh, leftmost column is in uh, inflation I, then R, and then U. Whereas here in the original data, it, it wasn't in alphabetical order. It was just in the order that I specified, real, real, real GDP, inflation, and unemployment. Okay. So that's um, so that's pivoting the data. Okay, which is which is a handy function. Okay, so as far as, you know, 
creating kind of numeric summaries and whatnot, um, we can use the group by function, right? And if, if you're familiar with group by from uh, dplyr and stuff in R, uh, a lot of this will feel uh, very familiar, okay? So here I have um, just a very simple toy data set. I've got key one, key two. And so these you can think of as kind of like grouping variables. And I've got a, a1, a2, b1, b2, and I got a1 again, right? And then, you know, we can think of these as just different variables, data one, data two, and these are just some kind of just arbitrary random numbers, 5, 11, 11, 5, 12, 15, 8, 0, 9, 16, okay? And so um, what we can do is we can take this first column, df data one, okay? And then we can say, you know what, group by key one, okay? And if we call that grouped, then we, it, and we say, well, you know, what's the result? It says we get this grouped by generic series grouped by object, right? Well, that, that wasn't that helpful, okay? But you can then ask, okay, well, what's the mean? Okay, what's the mean, right? So if we, if we take data one and we ask, well, what's the mean, all right? The mean, uh, we get five, 11, and nine, okay? So five plus a, for A, right? Key one, we're grouping by key one. Um, 5, 11, and 9 add up to 25. 25 divided by 3 gives me 8.33. And then as far as B goes, I get 12, and I've got 8. Those add up to 20. 20 divided by 2, the mean of 12 and 8 is going to be 10, 10.0, right? So when you call grouped, grouped itself doesn't look very useful, but then when you call a summary statistic such as the mean or the median or standard deviation or something, it's going to calculate those summary statistics based on the grouping variable that you provided, okay? And again, here's the original data frame just for your reference. You can take the data frame itself and you can call group by on it, okay? And so here we're gonna say group by on key one, okay? Which is uh, basically has A's and B's, okay? And then we can say calculate the mean. And then what this will do then is it will um, calculate the mean for, um, for basically any numeric variable that, it, that it's able to calculate the mean for, right? So data one, we get the same results, 8.3 and 10.0, but then it says, oh, you know what? Data two is also numeric and I'm able to calculate the mean. So it calculates the mean of 11, five and zero, I'm sorry, 11, five and 16. And then the mean of 15 and zero gives me 7.5. 7 okay. You can also um, group by, uh, and you can give it kind of um, two values here, okay? You, or, or multiple values and, and you can kind of, it'll create a hierarchy here. And so here we're gonna say, um, take data one, all right? And we want you to group by, and we're gonna give it basically a multi-index here as far as the grouping. It's gonna create a, a multi-index. Uh, we're gonna group by key one, uh, and then we're gonna group by key two, okay? And so here uh, I'm grouping by, you know, uh, a and B, okay? And so for, for a lot of these things, okay, there's only one value as far as data one goes, right? So as far as A2, there's only one entry for A2 and that's 11. And then B1 is 12 and B2 is eight. And the only thing where the mean actually gets calculated is A1, which appears five and A1, which down here is nine. And so the mean there is gonna be seven, okay? So the mean of five and nine gets calculated to be seven here. Okay, and then, um, and just like anything else that has a multi-index, you can um, do any kind of, um, of the multi-index operations, such as unstacking and, and swapping levels and things of that nature. Okay. Um, here, um, you can even perform group by on a separate series that doesn't even exist as part of the data, okay? So here I've made up a separate series that goes Ohio, California, California, Ohio, and Ohio, okay? So the only requirement is that when you have a separate series, it has to be of the correct length, right? So here is a series that's of length five. Here's another series that's of length five, okay? And we're gonna say, you know what? Uh, group by uh, the states and the years, okay? And we're gonna take the you know, existing data and group by uh, the states and the years, okay? As far as um, 
uh, data one goes. And so, um, so it's fine that Ohio and California, it, it's almost like you kind of, you can imagine this if, if it's easier in your head, what's going on is it's like, it's gonna append this, uh, this series as a new column and it's gonna append this series as a new column and then it's gonna perform the group by operation, okay? But you don't necessarily have to specifically append it yourself to the data. You can just have these separate series that, that exist. Um, other operations, uh, you know, you don't have to call mean, all right? Mean is very common because we like to calculate the mean of pretty much our numbers all the time, but you can call um, other functions such as size, which will just give you a count of how many values. And so really the only one that um, exists more than once as far as this multi-index goes is, um, is A1, which appears two times, okay? And then, um, and then so, you know, if you have this, you can also um, call group by, and what it will do is it, you can also iterate over the groups, okay? And so this is a little bit silly, but you can say, you know, for name and group, as far as the group by goes, what I want you to do is I want you to print out the name, I want you to print out the group, okay? And then print out group.mean, okay? And then print a bar, right? And so this, this, is a, is a little bit verbose, but this is, this is what's happening, right? So here's the original data, okay? And then, um, and when we call group by, what it's doing is it's creating this object that, that we can iterate over. And so, you know, when we say print the name, it's gonna be A. The group is basically a subset of the data frame where we filter just to group A, okay? And then from there, we can call uh, group.mean and it prints out exactly the mean for um, uh, data one, the, the mean of data one is 8.33 and the mean of data two is 10.66, okay? And then it prints out the bar and then it goes to the next um, value in the iterable, which will be um, name is B. And then it prints out the group object here is a subset of the data. And then it prints out the mean, um, the mean values there, okay? So you can, um, so if you have some kind of operation that you wanna do and it's, it's not as simple as just like finding the mean or something and you need to do some, some kind of uh, a series of functions on it, you can do it. And basically every group is gonna be basically a subset of the, uh, the original data. And, and that's a handy feature, I believe, okay? Uh, and then, you know, same, same type of thing here. This time I grouped by um, key two. And again, it's gonna be a subset uh, where key two is equal to one. And over here, um, we've grouped it and it's gonna give me a subset of the data where key two is equal to two and things of that nature, okay? And so um, the group by, the pivot, the stack and the unstack, I think those are all pretty handy. And, um, and from there, those, those serve as kind of the, the building blocks that you can use to then kind of power any kind of uh, data analysis as, as, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, uh, the data analysis that you, you, you'll do in Python will um, revolve around pandas and it will revolve around kind of slicing your data in certain ways um, by using group by or uh, you know, kind of restructuring your data using either the pivot or the stack or the unstack and things of those nature. Okay, so I um, wanted to give you that and, um, and we'll call it a day here. And so let me give you your last view quiz answer for today. Last view quiz answer today is the letter C. C as in cat, C as in cat, okay? Um, all right, and then uh, next week, we'll probably uh, do some examples. I'll give you some, um, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, some, some homework assignments that, that will have you um, do some uh, data wrangling and stuff. Okay, we have a question that says, how does the unpacking work if you group more than one. So if I did group by key one and key two or something like that, then, then it'll kind of go through, um, uh, I think every iteration and it will be, uh, you know, you'll have kind of a, a subset of the data where it's A1, a subset of the data where it's um, A2, a subset of the data where it's B1 and a subset of the data where it's B2. Um, I think I can try that out right here. And I think the name itself will be a tuple um, let's see, 
put this away. Let's see. Sweet Sun Ranch. Okay, so yeah, so if you, uh, so here I've grouped by key one, key two, and so the name is going to be a tuple A1, and it'll be a, basically a subset of the data where we have A1, and then uh, a, here's A2 and a subset of the data where it's just A2, and so on and so forth, okay? All right, uh, yeah, third quiz answer was the letter C. The letter C was the uh, third quiz answer there. Okay, well, uh, we'll end there. Have a good night, have a good weekend, and we'll see you guys, uh, see you on Monday.